Hi right, guys, what's going on? Megan here. Before I start the series, quick overview. The point, first, the purpose of the series is to get the facts straight, right? There's a lot of confusion in the fitness, uh, whatever industry, muscle building um, sphere about how and why muscles grow, right? And I don't blame you guys, right? There's You ask five different people the same question, even if they both have muscle mass, they'll give you three different answers, right? You ask top scientists, top experts, the same question, right? Some of the responses might be the same, but you're not gonna get the exact same response from every top expert, right? You pull up five random textbooks from exercise science or human physiology, whatever, and you look at the conclusion on five, the same five topics, you get different answers, right? The middle, the, the core is usually the same, but the details always fucking vary, and it's very frustrating, especially when a guy who does a lot of research. I'm, I'm, I feel your pain, guys. Go on Scholar Google, go on any legit source, and you will see different responses on the same problem. But, but, the core elements that I, that I mentioned earlier remain the same, right? The core elements remain the same. Uh, the basics, right? Hyper, the basics of hypertrophy will always remain the same, and that's what I always look at. Right? I don't have time to, to listen to the scientists debate, you know, with each other. You know, they're always fucking arguing, this study, this proof, this study, and this study says that this study is full of hemorrhoids, and... This other study says that this guy that doesn't even have a good license, whatever. I don't have time for that, right? So I focus on the core elements, the things that they all fucking agree on. That's my basic philosophy on research, right? Look for what they all agree on, right? What they disagree on, they'll, they'll you know, figure it out sooner or later. And as long as you, f you focus on the basic principles, you will always draw good conclusions, right? Nine out of ten times, and that's, that's more than enough for me. So let's get the facts straight first. I'm trying to get the facts out to you guys so you don't have to worry. These are, and when I say facts, I mean fucking facts, right? This is stuff that I don't care where in the world you go, no one will say the opposite, right? So we're just going to focus on pure facts that they all agree on. And unless you know these facts, you will never understand the one my, a lot of my videos. And you will never understand basic, you know, hypertrophy. Why do muscles grow? You never will understand that unless you got those facts down back. Fact number one. Satellite cells are fucking everything, guys. I want y'all to understand that. You don't understand how important this is. Let me make sure this is on the... Satellite cells are everything. They're really stem cells. I'm going to go into details later on. But you have to understand this. I'm putting this as fact number one. I don't want to order the facts. I don't want to rank them from like one to five, whatever. But if I had to, this would be the most important thing, right? And I'm showing you a picture of, uh, this is a basic muscle cell, right? I'm just trying, I'm trying to oversimplify everything so everybody can understand. This is a basic um, a cell. You see, I'm making up numbers, right? Three satellite cells, right? Three, three nuclei, which is the, plur the plural for nucleus. You see three, right? That's the, most cells only have one. Most cells only have one nucleus, right? Muscle cells are different than the rest of the body because they have multiple nuclei right multiple and you see what, what, what you see out here that's satellite cells right there's more than that but once again i'm keeping it simple they're satellite cells they're stem cells meaning they're, they're dormant right they're not activated yet they're not turning into your you know your eyes your nose every cell of the body you know has to come from a stem cell right stem cell that differentiates itself and becomes a nose uh a fucking hair cell you know your teeth whatever these guys are, are, are quiet. They're not activated yet right so they just and we call them satellite cells because you know they're around the muscles like a fucking satellite and shit but anyway and when you work out, when you actually train and cause micro tears, right, damage, these motherfuckers go to the source of the, you know, wherever the damage is. Let's say you did like bicep curls and you fucked up the cell right here. Most other cells of the body can just, uh, you know, divide and multiply. Muscle cells can't do that, right? So satellite cells have to go in. They have to, pro you know, proliferate, have to multiply, go there, fuse into myoblasts and repair the damage, right? And that's how your muscles get bigger and bigger over time. Everybody knows that, right? But that's the cell lifestyle split. That's why you go to anybody and you find a way to make the cell life cells not work. Not only they will waste away, but when they have damage, there won't be any repair going on because cell life cells are everything, right? They need to go to the source of injury. Let's say right here, they will proliferate there, multiply, fuse, whatever. They will donate a new nucleus, which will allow the muscle cell to grow, right? And so you see first, here the steps of hypertrophy, right? Cell one, cell two, cell three, right? The, the, at first, it's just chilling. Three satellite cells. Three nuclei inside, I mean, guys, and some satellite cells on the outside. You do some bicep curls, whatever, you tear that bitch up. The satellite cells will multiply. They'll go inside, whatever, and they'll donate new nuclei. You see that shit? It's the same cell. This one has about three. Once again, I'm making them numbers. This one has a whole bunch, right? Once the cell 
has this new nuclear. And why is the nuclear so important? It's because that's where the DNA is. That's where protein synthesis starts, right? So anyway, once the cell has all this extra nucle nuclear, then it can begin to grow, right? They can these Each of these can start synthesizing proteins and make the cell bigger, right? So first, I want you guys to understand that. It's very, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. There's a lot more going on, but once again, I want to simplify it for a basic audience. So recap, cellulite cells, uh, stem cells, right? Meaning they have, they have no identity for us. They don't know if they're going to become eyes, hair, teeth, whatever. They're just chilling around the muscle cell, right? When you experience damage or micro tears, the cell needs to grow. It needs to repair itself, but it's limited to the amount of nucleus, nuclei that it has. So these sacrificial motherfuckers volunteer their nucleus, right? They go inside, they donate the nuclei. So now you have this step right here, and they allow the muscle cell to grow bigger. So first, understand that. That's fact number one. Without cellulite cells, your muscles cannot grow. That's why, in fact, that's what, that's what testosterone does. That's what steroids do. Steroids speed up the whole activity of cellulite cells, right? IGF-1, all that shit you hear about in, in um, science circles. Myostatin, you know, the number one muscle stopper, right? That's what the name stands for, myostatin. Myostatin stops cellulite cells from proliferating so you don't get too fucking big. That's why like people that are myostatin deficient Right? Or they have a myostatin um, mutation where the myostatin is kind of like, you see the inactive or whatever, have in ridiculous muscle mass. I made a video about that, right? Because it's all about satellite cells. Yes, baby? Hi. So, testosterone, that's how testosterone helps you grow. I'm going to make a video about testosterone later on. That's how myostatin stops you from growing, all that shit. Satellite cells are everything. Kapish? All right, let's move on. Let's implement that. Yeah. Doop, doop. So another thing worth mentioning, when you hear people, uh, I mentioned that in an overtraining video, <coughs> when you hear people that have good genetics, <coughs> scientists call them high responders, right? Meaning you take them, you, you, you make them do the same exercise that another person is doing and they grow a lot faster, right? High responders, we call them easy gainers, whatever you want to call it. It simply means they have more satellite cells than the average person. So if I'm a high responder and um, say I'm a low responder, fuck, I'll be the high responder. Say I'm a high responder and Hunza's the low responder, right? Even though he's like twice my size. Say Hunza's the low responder and me and him do the same routine. We lift the same way. We train the same way. Ceteris paribus. Everything else equal, right? Because, I, because I'm a high responder and I have more satellite cells than Hunza, then what's going to happen when we both do the, that bicep curl and we tear down our muscle fibers? Because I have more satellite cells, it's going to be more proliferation, more differentiation, more nuclei, and I'm going to grow a lot faster. The low responder motherfucker, even though he's doing the exact same things in the same caloric surplus because he does not have as many satellite cells as I do, he won't have as much nuclei as I do, and he's going to grow a lot slower. That's why I tell people there are many factors to build the muscle other, other than just, you know, uh, caloric surplus and this and this and that. Those things are very important, but unless you understand how satellite cells work, you, you, you'll be like, why, is, why am I eating better than this guy and he's growing faster, right? And most people say, he just has better genetics. No motherfucker, he has more satellite cells and I explained to you how satellite cells can be increased even if you start off as a low responder you can end up a high responder by training more fucking frequently and by there's a lot of other I want to make part six and seven is going to focus on how to increase your satellite cell pool because there are ways of doing it. it's very easy I mean that's why you're able to grow and get bigger you start off very skinny I was 140 pounds I told you guys 142 pounds 20 years of age 15 percent body fat now I'm around 80% body fat, 200 pounds. You do the math, that's 45 pounds. Let's be nice. Take away five pounds, that's 40 pounds of muscle that we would have put on. And that would be impossible without satellite cells. So theoretically, so if you take me now, you put me in a study, they'll say, oh, this guy's a high responder, he has more satellite cells. When no motherfucker, if you took me when I was 142 pounds, I would have been a low responder. So understand the role satellite cells play, right? Next. Yeah, come on, son. <laughs> that's just anyway, a lazy person. I still am. I like, Hunter, and I believe that lazy people have the video. most potential out of every human right. being. And we spent like the last 10 years. The fact that we're going to be so lazy because we just. We, we, believe it or not, 